The very first thing that I'm going to do is look at how are things supposed to work in a normal healthy cell and then we'll talk about where cyanide jumps into this process that ruins everything and ends up killing us. So the very first thing to note here with your electron transport chain is where is this stuff coming from? So we've got two key players here. We've got NADH and FADH2. And NADH and FADH2 are referred to as high energy electron carriers. And so what that means is they're basically carrying high energy electrons from stuff that you're metabolizing. You're catabolizing stuff like a candy bar you just ate because that thing's full of glucose. And so that glucose will go through glycolysis to form a little bit of ATP. But what we really care about here is NADH and then you also form some pyruvate that goes into the citric acid cycle and that citric acid cycle really gets a lot more NADH out of that uh, pyruvate and then also gets us some FADH2 that are able to have these high energy electrons associated with them that are going to supply energy to drive this process that we are doing to create something that is referred to as an electrochemical gradient of protons. And so in this picture, you can really just think of protons like bowling balls, and this is like a shelf. And so basically what's happening during this process in a normally functioning cell is that you've got your NADH and your FADH2 powering these proteins, specifically complex one, three, and four of our electron transport chain. And by doing that, they're taking these bowling balls and they're stacking them high up on this shelf and then over time what's happening is that these bowling balls fall through this thing that we call ATP synthase. And ATP synthase's job is to spin around and as it spins it mechanically is pressing the phosphate, the inorganic phosphate group onto an ADP molecule and it makes ATP. And so ATP is the thing at the end of the day that is what keeps you alive by having these ATP in your cells that are able to couple to reactions to make your muscles contract and all that other stuff we talked about. So ATP synthase, huge, hugely important player. We've got our electron transport chain complexes that are also very important and they're being powered by these things FADH2 and NADH. And so where does cyanide jump into this picture? So cyanide has the structure of this. So a cyanide is carbon triple bonded to nitrogen and nitrogen has its two electrons there so it's fine but this carbon is going to carry a negative formal charge on it and so what the cyanide does is it's basically going to latch onto complex four of your electron transport chain and so why is this a bad thing so the way to think of your complexes one two three and four of your electron transport chain is that these guys are like gears that are all connected together. And so if you jammed one gear, you're gonna jam all the gears upstream. And so with cyanide, if it's jamming gear four in your electron transport chain, then gears three, one, and two are all gonna stop because they can't because you just get this huge backflow and you have nothing to do with the electrons when they get to this point. And so by basically taking a cyanide, which would be the metaphorical equivalent of taking a screwdriver or a wrench and throwing that into that gear four and jamming gear four uh, so it can't move anymore, what's going to happen is that all of the protons that we are able to take and stack up onto our bowling ball shelf into this intermembrane space of our mitochondria are no longer going to be able to get put up there. So if you don't have any more bowling, bowling balls to keep falling through your ATP synthase, you're not going to be able to spin it and you're not going to be able to make any more ATP. And so that is going to wrap things up for this video. I hope it's interesting. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll talk to you guys next time.